You're listening to the Relicart PM2. It's a dynamic cardioid podcasting microphone with both USB and XLR output. And unfortunately, I recorded an unboxing video, but the file is corrupt and unreadable. So you're just going to have to trust me as to what came in the box, which is the microphone and yoke mount, a USB-C cable, a USB-C to A adapter, and a USB-C to lightning adapter. This microphone is heavy and solidly constructed, and it reminds me a lot of the Shure MV7. The foam filter is removable to reveal the grill, which is also removable. The mic has touch controls for mic gain control and a headphone volume output control. However, it should be noted that these controls only work in USB mode and have no bearing on XLR output. On the bottom of the mic, we have our USB-C port, headphone jack, and XLR port. As far as audio tests, you've been listening to it this entire time. All of this audio is unfiltered and unprocessed, so what you hear is what you get, unless otherwise specified. But here's a plosive test. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. And here's a sibilance test. Sally shares a sack of sugary snacks with a syndicate of seven sneaky squirrels. This is a dynamic microphone, so it's designed to have your mouth fairly close to the microphone. Up to this point, I've been keeping my mouth within a few inches of the mic, but as I move away, the audio really starts to drop off very quickly. Here's a handling noise test. Here's a background fan noise test. This is what the Relicart PM2 sounds like as I talk and type with the keyboard directly under the microphone about 10 inches away. And the following is what the Relicart PM2 sounds like in comparison to other similar microphones in a similar budget price range. Here is what the FDUCE SL40 sounds like in comparison to the Relicart PM2. I've simply removed the XLR cable from the PM2 and plugged it into the FDUCE SL40. Again, this is what it sounds like in comparison. And here is what the Samson Q9U sounds like in comparison to the Relicart PM2. Again, I've simply removed the XLR cable from the PM2 and plugged it into the Q9U. At this point, the Q9U has both its mid boost and its low filter turned on. And for a final comparison test, this is what the Samson Q2U sounds like in comparison to the Relicart PM2. Again, I've simply just removed the XLR cable out of the back of the previous microphone and plugged it into the back of the Samson Q2U. Up to this point in the video, I've recorded everything with the XLR output of this microphone. I've now switched over to USB output, and this is what you can expect this mic to sound like. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Sally shares a sack of sugary snacks with a syndicate of seven sneaky squirrels. I have the Windows mic gain set at 50%, and I would like to note that some advantages of using this microphone in USB mode is that you can use the touch gain control of both the mic input and the headphone output to control the volume levels of both. Another advantage of using this microphone in USB mode is that you can use the included Relicart software to take control and dial in the sound of this mic. It's the same thing that I do with plugins in OBS to control this mic in XLR mode, but it's a nice included feature to have with this mic. I'm not going to go too deep into this software because one, I think you're smart enough to get the idea, but two, there's also a great overview of this software done by Obscure Mics, and he does a great job with microphone reviews anyway. So I'm going to put a link to his video in the description below for anyone who would like to check out a full overview of this software. He did a really amazing job covering the software in depth. So now I am back in XLR output mode and I'm using a few filters in OBS Studio. I don't think this microphone needs much as far as filters go, but I'm mainly just using these filters to lighten up the harshness of the plosives as I think this microphone doesn't really need much out of the box. Also, as you can see here, I'm using a Clark Technic audio booster, which gives me around 20 decibels of clean gain, which is a nice luxury, but absolutely not necessary for this microphone. 
As far as my final thoughts on this microphone, overall, I love it. It has become my favorite microphone. I do have one complaint, and that is that the tensioner knobs seem to have to be tightened very tight to hold the mic in place. But once you get it set there, it seems to be okay. But I hope I've given you enough information to come to your own conclusion whether or not this microphone is a good fit for you. Thank you so much for watching. That's it for now, and I'll see you next time.